Dosto, I'm about to do something that I never ever thought I would do. And I was gonna tell you about it, overlooking Delhi and sitting on my cart, but it's 39 degrees, so it's gonna look like I'm being tortured. So let's go into my room, let's go inside, and I'll tell you about my marriage and my weird ideas about marriage. I've been keeping a huge, huge secret from you guys. So I have been dating a girl and she's been cropping up in a few of the videos you might have noticed and we're getting married soon. But actually, I've never ever wanted to get married. I'm 34 and you know, happily unmarried. But in India, there's only so long you can date a girl before the pressure of marriage comes up. And we're doing things very differently, very untraditionally. So I'll tell you all about that. I'll tell you about how I met her, how I met her parents, what's gonna happen at the wedding and what's gonna happen after marriage to me. Cause you know, I'm a foreigner and usually the girl goes to the guy's house, right? So I'll tell you what's happening. Our relationship, it started four years ago when I met her in Malvia Naga at actually my apartment. She'd come over to meet my flatmates and they were having a birthday party for her. And I just remember opening the door and just being like, whoa, you know, who is this? You know, when you meet somebody sometimes and something just clicks in your head and you're just attracted to them and you're just intrigued by them and you want to know more about them. That was, you know, the first feeling I had with Manisha. So I got to know her over the, the course of her birthday party at my my apartment and I asked her out on a date after that and we went to Lodi Garden for a walk for our, for our first date just to get to know each other better but then I had to leave India. I was only in India for six months at that point just just traveling around and, and enjoying India. I wasn't here permanently so I went back to New Zealand and of course I came back a little while later and now we've been dating for two and a half years. We just picked things off where we left them when, when, when I came back to, to India. And actually I'm saving the full story, it's a long story, for a Bollywood film because it's a Bollywood style love story. For a little bit of, little bit of masala and, and drama in there. And I guess Amir Khan, I'll let him direct it. Kangana Ranaut can be Manisha. Amit Trivedi can do the music and I don't know who will act as me. Maybe I'll act with Kangana. Anyways, after I got back to India, after like a year, a year and a half of being here, it was time to meet her parents. She told them about me and now was a big moment. Now Manisha is a Jat from Haryana and Jats and, and Haryanvis are traditionally really, really conservative people. So meeting her family is a big, big deal because here in India, you're not really meant to or allowed to date or marry a foreigner. For some reason, it's just frowned on. So I knew I really had to like impress when I went to meet her parents, but honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. I was staying in a hostel and the day before I was going to meet her parents, I met this guy as you do in hostels and we just started chatting and telling him what I was doing, why I was here in Delhi to meet my girlfriend's parents and he's like, oh dude, I'll give you a little class and what to do and the things he told me, I was just like, what? I had no idea what I had to do, my girlfriend hadn't told me. So the best thing, the most important thing to do if you're meeting your girlfriend's Indian parents and this is what this guy told me, he's like, you have to bend down as soon as you meet them and touch their feet with your hands at the door as soon as you meet them. Just go down and touch their feet. And I was like, huh? Eh? Like, yeah, yeah, what is this? And he explained it to me and then I messaged my girlfriend. I'm like, do I have to bend down and touch your parents' feet? And she's like, no, you don't have to. But the guy's like, no, 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 you have to. Indian parents love this. This shows, you know, great respect for them. And so that guy couldn't have been any more correct or right. Oh my God. So as soon as I got to the front door, I rang the doorbell, I was so, so nervous, right? And her mum and her dad come to the door, they open the door and I'm like, namaste. And I just bent down and, you know, touched both from both feet. And, you know, one of the first things her dad said was, wah, Indian values. And it was the best way to start the relationship with her parents by showing them this respect and you know adapting myself to 
their culture. And it just started the meeting off so well on such a positive note. But you know what? I really hit the jackpot with her family. So even though they're conservatives from a village in Haryana now living in Delhi, they're open-minded and open-minded enough to meet me at least and you know have not have been pushing her daughter into marriage because she was 29 at the time when I came and met her parents and that's you know really unusual for India as well for a woman in India and I should say like so many women get pushed into marriage here but people never think about the men too so men also get pushed into marriage here it's just as big of a problem for men as it is for women getting forced or pushed into getting married to whoever their parents want them to marry. It's, it's really bad here. Anyway, that's a topic for an entire another video. So I'm sitting there and it's like, just like you see in the movie. So there's two couches, one on the left, one on the right. Her parents are on the right. I'm sitting here on the left. In the middle is a table and there's like a samosa on it and I don't know, some biscuits and tea, chai as well. And her parents just start asking all those, you know, typical Indian kind of questions. What do you do? Where are you from? What do your parents do? And we didn't get to the, you know, the big elephant in the room question, which is how much do you earn? They actually, actually ask this question or they ask how much property do you have? These kind of questions. We, he didn't ask, her dad didn't ask me that straight away, but you know, we got there later in the day when, when he asked me how much I earn and you know, I just, I just told him, right? Like there's nothing to hide. So I know a lot of people will find that, you know, a totally not the right question to ever ask somebody, but the idea behind it for Indian parents is that they want to make sure that you can look after their daughter. So yeah, they don't want to just marry their daughter off to anybody. For me, um, money is not even a, you know, a question when it comes to who I'm, I'm going to marry. It's, it's all about the person, but you know, it's a little bit different here in India and I understand the logic and the thinking behind it. Indian parents and Indian families, they make you feel like a family as soon as you step into the house and kind of one, one really cute thing her dad did was he ordered a tray, an entire tray of Coca-Cola cans because that's what he thought that foreigners like to drink. And when I heard that, I was just like, oh my God, that's like, that's such a, such a sweet thing to do for somebody, you know, to put yourself in their shoes and think, you know, okay, he's in India, but what can we do to make him feel a little more at home? So that, that, was, that was really sweet, even though I don't drink Coke. But anyway, I'd rather have masala chai. So yeah, that was, that was really sweet of, of him. And you know, when I when I met their family for the first time, they just they just welcomed me in and I spent the entire day at their house with them, meeting them, you know, walking around the neighborhood, going to the park and just doing all these kind of normal things and they were just kind of sussing me out and, and working out who I am and just getting to know me as a person. And now we're back drifting, just lonely island. I've never dreamed of being married or having a big fat wedding. I don't see the point in marriage actually like, why do I need a piece of paper that says I'm, I'm married? I can be in a perfectly good relationship, a committed relationship without being married. I don't need to be married for me to have a committed relationship, right? Like what's the point? And once you learn how much money Indians spend on weddings, especially here in Delhi, it just blows your mind. So an average kind of middle class Delhi wedding might go for between 100,000 to kind of $200,000. And when I learned this, what my friends were spending on their weddings, like it just blew my mind and I'm like, I cannot be responsible for burning that much money on, you know, a big party. Like it, that's too much. There's so many more things you can do with that money. You can invest that money. You can buy a house. You can buy anything with, with that much money here in India. You know, I don't need a big fat wedding and a podium for Manisha to fly down onto the stage on. Like, yeah, it's just, to, to me, it's burning money, right? Like. I don't even want to get, I don't even see the point in marriage, why would I want a big fat Indian wedding as well? But you know, like, 
it's it's about compromise, right? So you can't be in India and be dating someone for so long and not get married. It's, I'll get into the compromise part later anyway. And it's the same thing with diamond rings, right? Diamond rings are a complete scam and they're a monopoly and the price is controlled by one company. So I don't care about marriage and I don't care about diamond rings. And luckily Manisha feels the same way about marriage. Maybe not about diamond rings, nah, but about marriage. You know, you don't need to be married to be in a committed relationship. And you know, for us, or at least for me, marriage is about companionship, having a life companion, someone who you can spend your time with, share your life with. That's what it's, that's what a relationship is about for me. And by now you can probably tell I'm not that romantic or sentimental. I'm a little bit stubborn, maybe a little bit selfish, and I can't just do something because society tells me that I need to be married or that I need to have a big wedding or that. I need to do anything like I make my own choices in life. I think about things and decide what's right for me. I create my own life. I create my own path in life and I shape my own world. Basically, I can't just do things because society tells me to do them, right? And I told Manisha all of this stuff at the very beginning of the, of the relationship before, you know, it got too far because, you know, so many girls want the big wedding and are so excited by marriage. So I, I really, I really got lucky to, to meet her and for her to understand all this about me. And I know a lot of you will probably think I'm, I'm crazy and quite selfish because of not wanting to get married and not wanting to have a big fat Indian wedding, but you know, it's because here in India the individual is less important and the group or the society is far more important here. So throwing a big wedding celebration is very important here because it's just part of how society operates and society is a lot more communal here in India. In the West it's a lot more individualistic and that's where my ideas of doing what I want to do come from. But what can I do? You know, this is me and I'm proud of the decisions I make and, and the way that I, that I choose to live. Okay, so you know like I'm not having a big Indian wedding, but that's not to say that I won't compromise. So I compromised with her family. We both compromised and decided, yeah, we will get married because, you know, they have been so good to her and so good to me that, you know, it's a compromise that, that I'm willing to make. I will get married. We will do, you know, we will, the bit of, we will get the bit of papers signed. We decided that we'll have a court marriage. We'll get married at court and I'm gonna film the entire thing so you can see what a court marriage looks like here in India. And that we'll have a small reception later in the year when the weather is better and we'll bring all my, my family over from New Zealand. And you know, there will be a party of some sort. It just won't be 10,000 people coming to a big wedding ground here in Delhi over the course of a couple of days. You know, it's gonna be a small reception of our close family later in the year at some kind of some kind of small wedding venue. So, you know, this is the compromise we made. We're getting married and we're having a, a small reception and you know, I'm happy because we're not burning all that money and I'm not gonna have to be the center of attention at a wedding and yeah, I, I'm really happy with how everything turned out and how open-minded her parents were. Oh, oh, oh. And as you can imagine, for Indian parents, this is all a complete shock because what we're asking for and what we're doing is so, so untraditional. And remember, I, I said that her parents were quite conservative. So I have so much respect for auntie and uncle because of how open-minded they are and you know the compromises they have made to bring me into, into their family and actually it's more than that because they have gone against society three times now for me and for Manisha. So they're allowing her firstly to have a love marriage. Secondly, they're allowing her to marry a foreigner. And then thirdly, they agreed to not have a big fat Indian wedding and not waste all this money on a big fat Indian wedding. So that is mind blowing and that is amazing here in India. But uncle took it a step further. So rather than spending a ton of money on Manisha's wedding, he's invested it in something for Manisha under Manisha's name. So she gets that money, she gets the revenue generated by 
I can't really say what it is, it's up, for her, it's up to her to say, you know, what exactly it is if she wants to. So yeah, Uncle has invested all that money in Manisha's name and now she benefits from that rather than us all, you know, just having a big party and just burning it on a wedding. So this is all quite, quite amazing for India and quite unheard of, like all oh, my friends are getting married here and they're all doing it the traditional way and yeah, we are doing it so untraditionally and uncle and auntie are going up against society and up against family saying, you know, this is, this is how we're doing it. There is so much kickback from Indian society and, you know, people in the immediate vicinity about how untraditional this is and, you know, uncle has to explain what's happening and why he's doing it and, you know, the compromises, so uh, it's, he's a hero. Auntie and uncle are, are, are real heroes, both of them. And so now you can probably understand why I have so much respect for them and why I'm so happy to be part of their family and that I feel so grateful that they've accepted me into their family and worked with me on what we're doing here on marriage and a wedding. And you know they do it because they love their daughter. It's as, it's as simple as that. Now, so after marriage, it's all happening in reverse. So usually the girl goes to the guy's house to live, but in this case, I'm coming to Manisha's house to live in a joint family situation with her family. And I've seen how this can't work and I've seen how this can work. You know, the biggest issue is a lack of privacy in a joint family. But I learned from my friends in Baroda that if you have a big enough apartment or house, you know, you can make that private space for you guys. So how they live is they have a three-story house and in the first two stories the the whole family shares it right and then on the top floor they have their own private floor of their bedroom the gym and everything so that's the goal here to live in the joint family situation but also have your own privacy as well and if it doesn't work out you can you know we can always go and get an apartment somewhere it's, it's no issues and after marriage, don't expect anything to change on this channel. You guys know that freedom is really important for me. So I will always have the freedom to travel where I want and do what I want even after marriage. Nothing will change. Oh yeah, I had to tell my parents too, na, to, they'd already met Manisha actually. So they already loved her and already accepted her. and. They always trust my, uh, my choice anyway. They've always made good choices in the past. So yeah, there's no issue. My, fa my family easily accepted Manisha and, and love her. And yeah. Oh, and there's no plans for us to move to New Zealand. No plans at all. We are remaining here in India. I'm sure I've missed so much of the story out and you guys all have so many questions. So Manisha and I, we're gonna do an Ask Us Anything live stream so put your comment in the pinned comment in the comment section it can be anything ask us anything literally and if you guys want to congratulate us just do it in the comments no gifts nothing like that you know all i want from you guys is your support and your friendship jay hind <laughs> <laughs>